Hey guys, John Ton from Toll Brohammer here, coming at you with another Warhammer 2 live battle cast. Alright, looks like we're fine Merarches. He's going to Hyle, so who do we want to play? Who do we want to play? Let us try. You know what? I'm I'm feeling some green skins today. Let's do some green skins. One of my favorite factions for sure. So, for our lord, I think we shall go. Let's uh Let's be a little bit risky and go in the air. Might be a little bit crazy against the vampire counts, but the thing about uh, Wurzag is, is he is extremely fast. So what I'm hoping to do here, if he ever lands, I'll have a, some Golem big bosses ready to pounce on him. And if he wants to just chase our lord with some flyers, we are going to have the Goblo firing squad ready to just shoot him up. So let's also bring a unit of squig hoppers. Let's bring Mulgrub's Minch Marauders. And we're just gonna want some black orcs. Maybe a couple orc begins for some anti large in the back line. We got a uh, nasty skulker that we're gonna also put in the back line so that he can uh, hopefully just muck up some guys. And we got a little bit of extra money, so let's just grab another group of goblins here. Just to muck up our enemy. And kind of not a hastily picked army, but I'm hoping it's going to work here. So we are on the Battle of the Cairns. Let's see what we can do against Mirarches and his Hyos. So guys, I've been doing a lot of live casts lately. And uh, y'all are going to have to tell me if y'all like the live cast better, where I explain my army as I'm choosing them. Or if you would prefer the, uh, the cast where I do it after the fact and just explain my army while we're on the battlefield. So, uh, yeah, if anyone has any preference, just tell me and I'll, I'll do those based on feedback. Right now I'm doing a lot of live casts because uh, they're just faster. I don't have to play the game and then go cast it. I can just play the game and cast it. I think the quality of speech kind of suffers a little bit, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Alright, so. Let us put our 8 peak loonies our low tier troops with the silver shields up in the front here. They can absorb some charges and the, uh, the eight pink loonies here are, uh, are unbreakable so that's really useful. We'll try to get them on some spearmen. Let's have our black orbs staggered behind them. Let's have our biggins just in the back here kinda on the flank so that they can defend against against cavalry that will be wanting to go after our uh, our archer firing squad here. So let's put all these guys on guard mode. Rusty arrows in the center and just spread them out. Yes, good. good. So let's put these Durkids squigs in the back here. Be not so snaky. And let's put these uh, mangy marauders over here. All right. So is that everything? It is. I like it. Let's do it. Good luck to my opponent. Let the battles begin. Alright, so we're going to start shooting at the Swordmaster to hold. So, an all-infantry army. Wow. Okay, so let's go find out who he's got for his lord. Let us go find this out. So, I think this is actually going to be pretty tough to beat. We will see. We will see. So, he does have a Tempest here, so I must have a uh, Mage of High Magic. Not too afraid of him. I'm just moving over to this side a little bit. Let's get our squigs up here, and let's go ahead and pop a Fade Buna on the CSTL Sword Master's Pulit. So he's got tier Interesting. So we can get uh, our two Goblin Big Bosses and old Azag the Slaughter over here on Tyrion. We'll do pretty great, I think. So let's get our Goblin Firing Squad in their own separate group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shooting at the Sword Master's Pulit in the middle here. I'm going to have you guys. Start engaging in the front line, and I'm gonna pull my goblins back. So he's getting all his spearmen in the back line just to fend off these one dark at squids. I am 100% fine with that. You guys can run back here, and uh, you guys, I mean, let's just, I'm just gonna fly over to the front line and uh, do some good damage with uh, the walk. Get all my guys walk. So let's get these guys over here, these guys, let's bring them over here. 
Hopefully we can get these nasty skulkers. Ooh, a really good breath attack. Oh, that was great. That was great. Fantastic play to my enemy there. I really like that. Um, let's get these dark squids moving. And let's get you guys all on this on him. So where does he have... What do we want to shoot at? Let's shoot at you guys. Let's have you shoot at him. And let's have you guys all get over here. So get a move on, where's that? You guys can come over here and chase these guys off. And his front line is indeed falling. Let's have you guys intercept. We want to keep our goblin firing squad up. And we're doing pretty good here. So let's see if we can get over here on Tyrion. And let's like another So where do we want to drop a Fate of Buna? Uh, not really any great places to put it right now. So it looks like we can shoot at the Swordmasters of Hoeth here. And we're doing pretty good work against uh, against old Tyrion here. But man, those those overcast tempests, look how much damage that's doing. That's insane. So let's have you guys pull out and go uh, chase off some Swordmasters of Hoeth. You guys can also go chase off some guys. And we're doing good damage against Tyrion here. Let's come and land over here. And I guess let's just drop a Fate of Bean on these spearmen. Why not? Let's have y'all come over here and help. We need some armor piercing over there. And you guys can shoot into these uh, white lines of trace. You guys go get these sword masters off. You guys keep on shooting into them. It's looking pretty good so far. He's just pulled Tyrion out, so likewise we're going to pull uh, Azag out. And uh, you know what? Let's go after. Uh, let's go over here after Tyrion. So I think we're doing pretty good here. Our goblin firing squad is just so powerful. Just gonna keep on shooting at these guys. We're hunting down some of his routing units with our Dirkit Squigs. Also pretty great. Let's start uh, start hitting up Tyrion here. Let's drop the Wog and a Spirit Leech on said Tyrion. And uh, start doing some damage on him here. Oh, and look at that damage, that Wog. We're getting those hits in. Oh, he just got wrecked, mate. He just got wrecked. And that, that was a good one, guys. That was a good one. So, wow, very powerful. So, with that, a lot of his army's morale is indeed breaking, and he is going to concede defeat there. So, let's put that in battle break down here. Man, that was just... With that wog, those, uh, both those Goblin Big Bosses were able to get their hits in. It was just fantastic. So, Azag, uh, definitely a risky pick against the Hiles, as they have, not only do they have high magic... They also have a very strong air force, but I wanted, wanted uh, to see if I could maybe... Azag's really fast, so I was hoping that I would be able to uh, run, just fly over my goblin firing squad and have them pick off any air units. I've done it before, it was pretty fun. But uh, he, he made a pretty good choice with the Mage of High Magic. And all that damage on Azag, almost all of that was from two overcast tempests, so really good play on his part. I like that a lot. But uh, unfortunately, Azak was able to get a lot of damage through with his Wog and uh, his magic. Colin Big Bosses, I almost always bring two of them. I love them. They're very cheap, and when combined together with a Lord, they can just take out a, uh, a Lord or any single entity target very, very fast. I absolutely love them. Using them as uh, using them alone is really risky, as alone they are they're really weak. But like I said, together. They are strong and cheap. So, Nasty Skulkers here. Uh, I brought them for the smoke bomb, but I completely forgot about it. Not gonna lie. And uh, he got a, he destroyed the 8 peak loonies with that uh, Sunfang from Tyrion. Our Orc Biggins were just holding guys up once they broke through our front line. Our Black Orcs did absolutely fantastic with the Fate of Bunas and the Goblin Firing Squad, as well as some rear charges from the Night Goblin Squid Coppers and Margaret's Mage Marauder. All this support made it so that my three Black Orcs were basically able to break, beat six armor piercing units. So that was really, really good. And, uh, you know, Goblin Firing Squad, a must bring. Like the Goblin Big Bosses, in my opinion, a must bring. Uh, the Squigs are pretty good. Margaret's Mage Marauders, almost an another must bring. I mean, the, uh, the Greenskins have uh, some things that really, really work, so and they work so well that I think you almost always want to bring them. And our Warlord's boys did some good job at just holding off some spearmen. So he pulled back all his spearmen to defend uh, against one Nighthopper, and I think that was a real overcommitment at the beginning of the battle. 
Now, it's probably good that he didn't engage them in the front line against Black Orcs, because these guys would have done absolutely nothing against Black Orcs. In fact, these guys would have done absolutely nothing against my entire army. The only option he really had for these guys was to try to get them on my archers, because they'll get messed up by Black Orcs, they'll get messed up by these Regiment of Renowned, uh, Regiment of Renowned Goblins here. And uh, they probably might be able to beat the nicest Skulkers, but yeah. All my infantry, they pretty much would have lost to. So, uh, he just, just sent them around the edges, I think. As for his army, Tyrion was really good. That Sunfang can be really useful against the against the Glittering Skins, because they have uh, the lightly armored goblins, which you can almost always expect, because like I said, they're so useful in every single matchup. Uh, too many spearmen, I think. I think to beat the green skins, you really want to rely on cavalry. And honestly, my army might not have fared too well against cavalry. Hard to say. I mean, this is a pretty standard standard kit for uh, fighting the high elves for me. Maybe not usually as a on a wyvern, but uh, white lines of trace. I think they're a garbage units. Once they lose their martial prowess, they just have sub subpar stats. And Swordmasters of Hoth, really good units, but they're so easily focused down. It's hard to make them work. It's, they're so expensive that it's hard to make them work. And it's hard to get them to be cost effective. Especially when I can bring so much cheaper things that can just absolutely destroy these guys super fast. But in any case, a good gain to Mare Arches. And that's going to be all for this one, guys. This is Jonathan for Total Burrowhammer signing out.